But let's get to the news. Let's talk about what's going on in the anime world of the week. Um, and we're going to start with um, a shocker this week. A bit of a revival for Genesis Climber Muspeda. Yay! No kidding. Yeah. This is kind of crazy. Um, it's only been like 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Um, I know. Uh, 1983 was that that series so yep yep um so it, there's a new project called genesis climber must pay to genesis breaker not enough genesis is in that title um of course shinji aramaki and hideki kakinuma are returning as mecha designers there's a career wow <laughs> i would love to be able to do that you know wow. get paid just to make up stuff yeah. you know yeah i work on this 30 years ago, I'll work on it again. Jeez. Um, they already have a, a 1 12th scale action figure uh, planned. There's a new armor design. Yeah. Um, the a new armored bike. Yeah, which looks pretty sweet. Um, the story is set during Genesis Climber. Um, it is set alongside Stick's journey towards the reflex point. Um, and it's going to be the secret organization known as the Genesis Breakers. Um, making uh, uh, moving forward on a, on a mission to study the the in bit or in vid as they were translated for, uh, yeah, for Robotech. Robotech. Yeah, um, right. uh, and uh, Gate is an information gathering specialist, uh, a female wearing female ride armor, um, and uh, so that is going to be a thing. Now they did not say anime, but we're assuming. Um, you know, there, there was no specific. Oh, th thing. that's a good point. Yeah, I, uh, you know, yeah. Um, but who I knows? hope it's anime. I mean, it'd be nice to have a follow up to you know actual Genesis Climber from all those years <laughs> ago versus a live action version of it. But well, I think if you're bringing back Shinji Aramaki, it's probably going to be anime. Like you're not going to do that for uh, a while or whatever, so. right? I, I would assume. Yeah. Um, but we'll see. But I think that it's really cool to see a revival of that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that really takes me back. I mean, I, I'm like actually remembering watching it, uh, you know, in, in my room and just remembering being so bummed at not being able to figure out the ending. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because I think I was like, what, 12 at the time, maybe? <laughs> now, were you watching maybe the 12, actual Genesis 12, Climber or were you watching that third part of Robotech? See, that's what I'm trying to figure out. I might, it might have been that third part of the, of the mm -hmm. Robotech. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, oh, say at that time it was 85 86 it would have been really hard to have found <laughs> genesis climber like in some uh, format mm, itself yeah yeah okay yeah it must have been robo robotech then and yeah. i hear the soundtracks being done by uh, they're reuniting genesis Ooh. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> now now which wow. version it, the, the peter gabriel or the uh, mm. phil collins it's the, just the phil collins one because uh, okay, yeah. Oh well, then we can forget that. Wow. <laughs> I'm sure that I'm sure the negotiations for that will fall through anyway. It's not very <laughs> so yeah, it's interesting because to me, this is one of those things where, on the one hand, like obviously there's no huge, you know, groundswell of 18 year old anime fans who are begging for a new Muspeda. Yeah. Um, you know, this is something uh, more for the older fans, which means they're out there, which means, you know, we're, we're, we're spending the money too, which I think is good. Um, but yeah, I, I think this is, it, it's nice to see that, um, uh, to see some love for that. And I think also what I like about this is that I think Muspeda, which is for those who aren't familiar, is one of the, 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 uh, the, the bikes, you know, they have this sort of the bike armor. Um, that is a concept that I think you can you know, update and do in, you know, in modern anime and look cool. Um, right. You know, Votoms yeah. is kind of chunky. Like, it, it was meant to be very sort of, you know, um, um, gritty, grounded stuff. And, like, you could, you could do that today. But I think that's something that you can, you can, you know, you can sell model kits of Muspeda pretty easily. Yeah. yeah. I'm just looking at the figurines, and it actually looks, it really does look pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. Also, yeah. It's, it's one of these things where it's, Obviously, Macross carries on forever, mm -hmm. and it always will, forever, ever. <laughs> um, <laughs> Macross today, Macross tomorrow, Macross forever. Um, but it's it's interesting that it's one of those things where 
the way that Harmony Gold and Carl Maycheck put it together, mm -hmm. to, you know, to drag Macross in with Army of the Southern Cross and with Genesis Glamour, that right. the way they mashed them together, it's interesting that now Genesis is getting another yeah. shot. Mm -hmm. What is happening to the army? Yeah, yeah, army of the Southern right. Cross. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, it so was like it was the ugly stepchild of those two. You know that the Delta, uh, Delta Macross Delta. Sorry, <laughs> um, the Macross stuff for all the Mecha mm. was really cool. Mm -hmm. Genesis Climber Mecha, also really cool. Mm -hmm. And then you had hover tanks. <laughs> they were just <laughs> terrible. So funny you should ask that. Um, Maycheck tells the story of how. When Robotech came out, they were contacted by the director of Southern Cross. Like Harmony Gold was contacted by him, thanking them profusely. Because it turns out Southern Cross was going to be his masterpiece, his masterwork. Um, he was a well-known mecha creator, um, mm -hmm. anime creator, and he did Southern Cross. And it took so long for the plot of Southern Cross to spin up. The people watched it and they got five, ten episodes in and were like, this isn't going anywhere, and they all abandoned it in Japan. Ooh. And it had a very poor reputation in Japan because no one like stuck around with it to see where the story was going. Um, right. And then when it got lost, licensed about over for Robotech, it found this new life. And <laughs> according to Maychak, the that director said, if you would like for me to work with you in the future, I would like to do that as thanks for you know rescuing my legacy so to speak um wow. and that didn't work out for you know there multiple reasons um but yeah i mean southern and i think it's one of the reasons why southern cross has kind of languished is because it's it's always had that kind of tarnished reputation in japan um and over here in america was well, part of robotech which is this weird licensing thing so it's kind of in limbo well it was never ever clear from from robotech's existence mm. that you know, you you only had that bit of Dana Sterling filling in mm -hmm. between the start of the of the trilogy and the end of the trilogy. Mm -hmm. So, I, I'm not. I've never gone because I didn't enjoy that section as much. Mm -hmm. I've never gone back to look and see Army of the Southern Cross. Is it like? A, is is there much more story than what they what they sort of abridged to get Macross joined to Genesis? You know and, what I mean? Is there so much more story that makes it much more interesting? Because what they show you, no offense to Robotech, love Robotech, mm, yeah. um, but what they show you of that in Robotech, it's just, it's just not, it's not terribly compelling. Mm, mm -hmm. Equipment's not terribly compelling. A, a lot of their storylines just they're okay enough. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? They they drop names so you can mm -hmm. associate who's with who and what's going on. But yeah. in a lot of it, it's just. If that was like the core of what Army of the Southern Cross was like, mm -hmm. yeah, I could see just bailing out on that after a few episodes. Be like, mm -hmm. yeah, just don't, it's not doing anything. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. Now, you, you know, they edited out very little of Robotech, um, of, of the, the original shows for Robotech, in terms of like shots, visual shots. Right. Um, but obviously, they had to rewrite all the dialogue. They didn't have any of the dialogue. Um, I would suspect. As somebody who, who watched Robotech but not didn't go back to watch all of Southern Cross, that there was probably a lot having to do with all the clone stuff and all of the, yeah. you know, am I real, you know, what are my memories, all that kind of stuff that the show could have gone further into that, um, you know, that just the lines of dialogue in Robotech were not about those things. Right. Well, I mean, just even if you cut dialogue out, like visually, you know, the the – uh, there's a lot about that middle portion that's just visually not very interesting. It, it's a very you know standard I mean? the, mega series of the time. You know, nothing yeah. against it. It just it just looks a lot like the other mega series of the time. Yeah, and it's like the uh, the bionoids or whatever they were that the the robots on their flying carts from the from the <laughs> masters. Mm -hmm. They you know the only thing that did anything was the hover tank, mm -hmm. and it converted you know from a hover tank to like a sort of mobile 155 platform on legs to a robot. Mm -hmm. It's like that was the only thing that did something. Yeah. Like all the the alien technology was just like fairly standard, you know, giant mm -hmm. ships with shields. Mm -hmm. And then that was it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, eh, okay. Mm -hmm. Sort of sort of sort of gun to me ish, you know <laughs> what I mean, where you just have a static robot. Yeah. And right. and nothing else is really kind of going on. So it's like mm -hmm. that's what a big difference from 
having Macross where you have the Valkyries that are flying mm-hmm. around, transforming and doing stuff. And it's like, oh, that's cool. Well, and it's a good, good remi- reminder that, you know, that's what most mecha are like. It's not Macross. It's not, yeah. you know, cool things. It's slight alterations to that same classic mecha design. <laughs> it, it was, it was what was interesting about Genesis Climbers, that you not yeah. only have the Alpha Fighters mm. that convert, mm-hmm. you have the Beta Fighter, which is the unit that locks into the Alpha Fighter, and that right. thing converts on itself, mm-hmm. and then you have the motorcycle armor. Mm-hmm. And all of it, con- you know, it's, everything is all yeah. converting, doing things, and it's just like, nah, you know, that 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 mixed well mm-hmm. with Macross because it's like, okay, now you've got this whole transformable kind of thing going on here. I got that. That the one in the middle was just mm-hmm. like, you, you had one sort of linking mm-hmm. element of transform transformation mm-hmm. ability, and then that was it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, I also and- wonder. I mean, the tone of Southern Cross also feels like it could have been um um i don't know uh, different depending on the dialogue right there's definitely a sort of a melancholy to southern cross um that that could be enhanced depending on the dialogue um right which they, which they may have just you know not done yeah, for robotech that's actually what killed it for me mm. um it, it fell out of reach and uh when i was watching it initially mm-hmm. and um yeah, there was a point where I, I think I was at the time. There was I, I've never gone back to it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think at the time that I was watching it, it just I just felt like I wanted. At the time when I was watching it, I said, "I want you to be this. Yeah, don't be this." Mm-hmm. And they they were this. Maybe I should go back to to Southern Cross and give it another try mm-hmm. and see you know how I felt about it because you know yeah. I, you know like a lot of other Robotech stuff. I'm you know just like you guys. I'm just like okay, the Mecca's pretty neat uh, does <laughs> these wonderful things and stuff like that mm-hmm. and southern cross and um i was just looking something up uh jj because you kept saying hover tank and for some reason and i had to look at the movie because it was like one of those like things in your head that you have to scratch because you just can't figure it out quite mm-hmm. a, or right away you're talking about hover tanks and for some reason i got barry bosworth in my head and it was that movie mega force and in the end he's fighting it's it's all about like these mechanized Cars and dirt bikes and things like that. It's an awful movie. Awful okay. movie. All right. And, 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 okay. And for some reason, when he kept saying hover tanks, I kept seeing mm. Barry Bosworth's triumphant scene in in the end of tra- getting the, this dirt bike with like four, you know, like you know, rocket missiles on the side of mm. this little shield on the front, and he's like mm. struggling to get it to fly it. <laughs> and, and when they shoot the and when they shoot the 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 missiles off, when he shoots the missiles off, they're like you know. I don't know if you ever a kid, but you made model rockets. They were literally just like little model rockets, mm. like, mm-hmm. and yeah. explosions on these tanks that were really just, I think, jeeps with a whole bunch of sheet metal around. Right. <laughs> you know, I, but it was called Mega Force. But for some reason, yeah. I kept getting that in my head whenever mm. you were saying hover tank. I was like, why is Bosworth getting in my head? It's not right. <laughs> Maybe you need some of Brent's uh, some uh, uh, spike tea. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, maybe that would help. I well, said on over. Exactly. Um, well, spend it on the YouTubes. <laughs> yes, all those tubes. Um, pour it into your end of the tube, and it'll be fine. <laughs> perfect. Um, well, speaking of difficult attempts, um, I had this odd little news story I wanted to mention next about um, the. Uh, an English dub for a movie called The Island of Giant Insects. Because um, I love covering <laughs> crowdfunding anime projects. And I think this is really interesting. Um, and this is just for the, for the dub, not for the film. for the English dub. The, the film okay. is made. Um, I think I saw snippets of it. And mm-hmm. it, like, it's very large bugs and people not a, so large. Yes. Yeah. It, it is, it is and, people, people getting killed by giant bugs is basically yeah. the movie. Um, so there's this, um, company called Sound Cadence Studios. Um, they have done, you know, ADR work on anime in the past. Um, the Galaxy Express 39's Eternal Fantasy movie, City Hunters and Juku Private Eyes, um, Ruby. I don't know if you've heard of that. Um, not so, RWBY. Yes, RWBY. Um, okay, thank you. <laughs> So that is the thing, um, and they want to dub this anime film. So they launched a Kickstarter for eighty thousand dollars to dub this film to pay for the actors and the studio time and the editing and all that kind of stuff. 
Uh, they did this uh, some time ago, uh, earlier this year, and it fell short. It did not make its goal. Uh, it stopped at, um, do they say, uh, yeah, $27,783 in pledges. Oh. Yeah, so that was kind of disappointing. So they've launched a new Kickstarter. The new Kickstarter is a, a little less than half that, so a total of 4 million yen, or 38,000 US dollars roughly, uh, with a lot of the extras in the first attempt now stretch goals in the second attempt, which I think is smart. So, you know, a lot of extra stuff just gets added on if everything works out well. Um, they also added some new merchandise as backer rewards, kind of sweetening the pot here and there um, with some reorganizations and so forth. And the good news is that as of this very second, that as I load the page, uh, they have 29 days to go, and they have made $23,000 of their $37,000 goal. Hmm. So they're a okay. lot nice. closer percentage-wise than they were before. Um, 200 backers. And um, I think this was just generally kind of the, the, the better way of going. Um, they have, so it was about tweaking how they were running this to get the get the appropriate get response. Mm -hmm. Yes. What um, did they do wrong the first time? Just posted it up on the wall and said, "Hey, we're doing a thing. <laughs> Anybody want to join?" And they're like, "That's look, we got this great thing about people dying horribly by giant <laughs> insects. So, yeah, money. <laughs> We'd like to scream in English versus screaming in Japanese. Mm -hmm. Pay us um, eighty thousand dollars. Yeah, that's not going to sell it tonight. Yeah, I think that, that was the problem. What's interesting? They were just, yeah. Go ahead. I was going to say, according to the um, the article, the the where they're saying the, uh, one of the tiers, one of the giving tiers, um, can do voice extras mm -hmm. on, on here, and that's actually something um, we used to do in the theater. So we would actually sell um, extra rolls on stage, you know, the, the you know the the spear carrier third from left kind mm -hmm. of thing, and so you would have a donor and you would have you you say, okay, hey, you give us ten thousand dollars, we'll put you in costume, we'll give you a spear, and we'll set you right there, and you just you don't have a line, but you do what you do and mm -hmm. or whatever, and that had provided so much sponsorship for a lot actually particularly for opera when i was at the opera mm. uh Baltimore opera that that did a lot so you know i i think you know if if you had the money and you said oh hey i could you know do a voice and thing it, and, and do this and maybe throw a few bucks at it and for the chance of getting it you know, and, why not and to that point there are um uh two voice roles in here that you could um you know pledge to be part of i assume they're small background characters and then there are four, which are, is literally uh, um, the the reward Scream. is listed as your screams in the movie. <laughs> wow! All Actually, where's my wallet? Yeah, I, I could do a pretty good death scream. All <laughs> six of those are already sold out. Damn. Oh damn! So I think you're absolutely right. The folks jumped on that, you know. Yeah. Interesting. Because um, I mean, that's seven hundred fifty dollars to for your screams in the movie. Um. Plus everything else, right? I mean, it's, it's a high tier. Well, yeah. kudos to them. I wonder, yeah. you know what I mean? It's just one of those things where it's like, I, I guess you didn't really consult maybe other people's mm. campaigns to see exactly how they did it. You just sort of mm. said, you know, campaign one was just let's yeah. launch it and see what people do. Mm -hmm. And then campaign two, you're like, maybe we'll do put a little bit of research on this. And that with these tiers yeah. and, and perks and things that that'll really hook people in on this. Well, it's also, I mean, I don't know that anyone's ever done this before. I don't know of any crowdfunding for an anime English dub that I know of. Um, so yeah, it could be they, part of. it could be they did all the research you know that is reasonable, and launched it and were like, oh, that didn't work because it's not the same thing, right? Like it, it, it's 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 possible that um, you know that was just kind of an experiment and it didn't work, so they tried something else. Well, as I say, even though it's just dubbing, mm -hmm. it's still you know it's still entertainment industry yep so i think it's the second shot at this mm -hmm. sounds a lot more like an indie film put together mm. yeah like yeah. Not, you know even though there's nothing about this film that's being dubbed that's got anything to do with what they're doing you know it's just mm -hmm. putting in the dub they're not animating anything they're not having to do any of that you know post-production whatever mm -hmm. but it's pretty much sounds pretty much like you were doing an indie film from scratch 
mm-hmm. so that you know what I mean. Rather than just saying, "Hey, give us money," you know what I mean. It's, now it's like, "Oh, you get to be a scream, and you can do mm-hmm. that, and we'll we'll give you a keychain, and you, you know what I mean." It's mm-hmm. like so. Yeah. Just, that that would be interesting to to imagine how they just sat back and looked yeah. at some other things and well, said, "Geez, here we go." <laughs> I mean, to be fair, a lot. Of, I mean, um, this new one is more of a reorganization of the last one. Um, but expanded. So, like, they had one of the extra roles was in the original uh, Kickstarter, but right. none of the screams, none of the female character, which I think is definitely a big limiting factor. Like, how many male voice actors are there versus female voice actors? Um, and then, right. you know, lowering that that goal, adding more merch, changing around things. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I agree yeah. in, in general. I, I think that they, they came at this... Um, um, from a direction that turned out to be meh, not ideal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I, I want to definitely praise these folks for not giving up. Um, yeah. Yeah. They, hallelujah. I think, yeah. I, I think it's great that they were like, okay, that didn't work. Let's, let's try it again. You know, learn from our mistakes, and it looks like it's working out for them. So good on them. Um, also, well, it does kind of beg beg the question is like, how does every I mean, does everybody else who does I mean Funimation all their catalog mm-hmm. does Funimation pay for the English dubs? Yes, yes, yes. You yes. Know? So yes. this is very it, interesting it's that you thing. have an independent that you don't have, you know, Sentai mm-hmm. paying their people to do or whoever made the Island of Giant Bugs um, <laughs> that they didn't pay their their people or the licensor of it didn't pay some people Mm -hmm. to do this, that you have these other folks somewhere out here trying to do this by crowdfunding. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, It's an interesting question. I'm looking it up real quick. Um, I don't know if this is licensed in the U.S. It might not be. Um, You you would think if it was Funimation licensed, this wouldn't be an issue because Funimation would then just pay to have it dubbed. Um, It is on Crunchyroll. Um, but yeah, for Steve now, <laughs> exactly. <yeah. laughs> we'll get to that now. We'll, we'll, we'll get for to that now. in a little bit. Um, um, <laughs> but first, let's talk about slightly happier news. Definitely happier news. Um, uh, Tutomu Mizushima this week uh, hinted that he is working on a new project. Um, and this is um, he teased on Twitter on Monday. He is close to starting a new project. It's been in the planning stages for years. Mizushima is the director of Girls and Panzer, Shiro Bako, The Magnificent Kotobuki, um, um, as well as Bludgeoning Witch Dokoro-chan. Oh, um, good fun. Good uh, fun. Yes. Kujibiki yes. on Balance from Genshiken. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Triple X Holic. Oh, um, okay. Uh, uh, Azazel san, um, he has confirmed that it is neither you're being summoned to Azazel or a new budgeting angel to Korochan. Although he said he would he would be very interested in doing a new budgeting angel to Korochan if, if the opportunity came up. Um, but uh, but I would be not. interested too. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I just brought this up because I think it's really fun when. Creators get out there and say, "Hey, hey, everyone! I'm working on something. Get excited!" Like it's always just neat to see. I don't Hopefully, know. it carries all the way through, though, and it's not <laughs> right. like I'm working on something new. Oh, but I'm also, but I got paid more money to do something else. Yeah. So we're gonna shelve that. I'm glad I didn't <laughs> tell you what it was. I'm gonna shelve that for another many years and do this other thing. Okay. So, so here's here is a a list. Uh, of everything that he's directed that I'm I'm aware of, which of these would you like to see more of? Charles and Panzer. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Just wait. Um, Sorry, what? Uh, another. Oh. Big wind up. Hmm. Blood Sea. Really? Ooh, yes. Blood really. <laughs> this man has a resume. Oh, Blood Sea. Um, Jeez. Dikurochan. Um, huh. Yeah, Genshiken, Koro. Oh, you know, oh yeah. Uh. <laughs> he directed the OVA, another TV series, but he also directed Kujiun. Uh, okay. Could you begin balance? Um, okay. Girls in Panzer, um, Hare Gu. 
Who remembers Hare Gu? The little girl is on the that... tropical island. In the jungle. Oh, yeah, that one. Yo, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, yes. I remember that one. Uh-huh. Um, it's hard to forget that yeah. one. <laughs> um, he was a serious composition on Ichigo 100%. Oh, really? No shit. Yeah. Oh, joke. Um, <laughs> let's see here. Right. Other things again I'm not familiar with. Lost Village, not familiar with. Um, Magical Witch Pune Chan, which is hilarious. Um, very much uh, a, was, a was Lost, Lost Village wasn't the one where the, everybody's on a bus trying to get to like some some strange village where Could their be. dreams can come um, true or something. Is yeah, it? that's is that the Lost one. Village? That's the one. That's Lost Village. Okay. Right. Um, right. Prison School. Oh wow! Oh, <laughs> Ooh, wow. He had <laughs> Okay. Shirobako. Squid Girl. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> wow. Uh, witchcraft Works, which you're not familiar with. Um, oh, Witchcraft Works was good. I enjoyed that one. Um, Holic. And then you're being summoned to Azazel. You got to choose one. What, what, what do you see more of? Girls um, and Panther. <laughs> <laughs> torn between Decora and, and um, let's see. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. I hear that. But of course, oh. that's fine. Mm -hmm. you, you know, it just the... What a shotgun blast. <laughs> I mean, I know, just right? like everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's totally. amazing. Uh, so, so let's, cool. let's just do a crowdfund me page <laughs> for all of it. Yes, exactly. Yes. yes. <laughs> all of it. We are attempting to raise one hundred and eighty seven million dollars. <laughs> you have all of it made. Wow. Yeah. That's just so a... that's just so interesting to think of like the differences in all of those individual shows mm -hmm. yeah. that what is it about his style yeah. that yeah. is is part of all of those that made that choice you know what i mean it's yeah, like somebody yeah. who's really really good at horror and that's their thing somebody right he's really good at comedy or whatever it's like you know you have a certain kinds of people that sometimes fall into a pretty good path mm -hmm. and then you get somebody who's like obviously an all-rounder yeah you know what i mean it can cover all the bases like, yeah wow. how do you draw a line from another to dokuro chan to girls in ponzer like that those yeah. what yeah. <laughs> i love it <sighs> Um. Yeah. Pretty. Pretty crazy. Wow. Um, well, that's that'll that'll be interesting to see what it is. Mm -hmm. what, what this new anime is coming. So Absolutely. We'll um, and <laughs> I mean, it's, I think when you post that on Twitter, it's like, well, yeah, it could be one of any number of things. Who the heck knows? Yeah. <laughs> um, gosh. Um, moving on to some sort of uh, um, delay-related news. Um, just because this is uh, worth noting, the. Uh, the anime adaptation of Uzumaki has been pushed back. Um, uh, Adult Swim uh, posted a teaser trailer for this. It was actually made last year, but they updated it to have a new date on it. Um, right. It's coming out in 2021. Uh, they're also doing an a, uh, interview with the director about it. Um, it is a four-episode miniseries that will premiere on Toonami, adapting a Junji Ito, I believe, single-volume manga? Uh, or like two volume manga, something like that. It's not big. It's two. It's um, two volume. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, Am I just imagining three, things, but... or has Jinji Ito just been like a lot of talk about Jinji Ito in totally. the last like yeah, several months? Serious. Yeah. He he is yeah. he's gone big time. Um, yeah. I think the, the Jinji Ito collection anime from a couple seasons back helped kind right. of build some of the interest. Um, but I know yeah. Crunchyroll has been pushing Jinji Ito mm. madly. Really? So it's like the Crunchy store has an entire collection section mm. just junji ito stuff mm -hmm. t-shirts and kit you right. know knickknacks mm. various things yeah yeah um yeah, this is interesting i i wonder if it's one of those things where he's just been i mean he's certainly not laboring in obscurity in japan um but right. there, you know there, there's enough there now and actually that's a good point i wonder if it's one of those things where there is such a buildup of you know merch in japan Everyone knows that all that is. Now that there's enough interest in America, they're like, great, we have so many things we can sell you, Junji Ito related. Yeah. <laughs> you have boatloads. Here it is. Here you go. Could be. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Um, I just can't wait for it. I just, I just love uh, when I saw the trailer, um, mm. what was it, eight months ago? Was that nine months ago? Something like that, yeah. Or was it further now? Yeah. Um, I just 
think it's beautiful. Mm. Um, I, I just, I mean, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, yeah, there's a lot of craziness going on there, but I just, I just I think I'm just in the mood of just something different like that now. Mm -hmm. I, you, you know what I mean? And, um, and I'm kind of, I'm a little bit, I'm happy to see it as an adult swim and not mm. Netflix to be, to be honest. Yeah. 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 Um, It'll be much more you know, accessible in adult slow. swim. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um, but I'm just like, when I watched that trailer, I was just like, Oh my God, this is <laughs> amazing. This is so weird. But you know, I, yeah, you won't need drugs for that one. Mm -hmm. You just, just watch yeah. it. Which is pretty typical for Junji Ito, you know, just, yeah. and that happened. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Um, all right. Uh, let's move on to some streaming news. Start with the good news first. Uh, whoops. Uh, yeah, that's it. Um, uh, update to Netflix's catalog. They have added uh, two anime scripted by Maki o Mario Kata, excuse me, uh, Toradora and Alone in the Sea now on Netflix. Um, Toradora being one of the great classic um, uh, shoujo romance anime with one of the classic yeah. tsundere characters of all time. Um, Taiga. And then, oh, yep, Taiga. Um, and they also added a Tokyo Ghoul Re, uh, 24 episodes of that, plus the third season of Tokyo Ghoul. Um, as well as nah. to Tokyo Ghoul... The square root of A is what I'm seeing is the symbol. I don't know. There's a little square root symbol in an A. I don't know. Yeah, I've seen uh, that. Yeah. Uh, um, Tokyo Ghoul Alpha or something. Let me just see if there's something. Uh, Tokyo Ghoul. Um, yeah, just Tokyo Ghoul square root of A. Okay. Um, they've also brought a few uh, things back, relicensed apparently. Um, Samurai Champloo and Terror in Residence now back, as well as Trigun. So if you've never checked out oh. Trigun. It is now oh, on Netflix, and I'm I'm hoping that Trigun becomes one of those shows that just becomes, you know, like a Nick at Night show. It's everywhere, where it's just cheap enough to license that just everyone has it everywhere because everyone yeah. should see Trigun. It, it it should be because in Japan they don't really care about it at mm -hmm. all. Um, when they made right. that thing, when they made that thing, nope, everyone's just like, oh, okay, it's a Western, whatever, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. and then it came over to Adult Swim, and then people like me are just like. This I, is funny and good, and you know. absolutely. Um, I went to Anime Expo a couple years ago, and I happened to be there with um, the a, a panel with the director of Trigun, um, and he he was there, um, and it was a Trigun panel. I was like, oh, I'm going to that, no question. And so I went to the panel, and right. I got there like 15 minutes early, and you know, a, a Vash player comes in, and a a, um, a Wolfwood cosplayer comes in. And the, uh, you know, the, the Japanese guests come in and he like, oh, you know, he, he jumps up and points because he says, you don't understand. Is this Satoshi Nishimura? Um, my, my thing. I should redo this. One moment. There we go. He said, you understand, I have never seen Trigun cosplay before. Because this show is not wow. popular in Japan, oh, wow. right? Like, no one cosplayed it in Japan. Yeah. So he, like, had them all come up and take photos with him, and he was just thrilled as punch. Wow, that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> to actually see was cosplay this fans. Satoshi Nishimura? Uh, Satoshi Nishimura? Say, it could be. Uh, let me just double check. He was the director, episode yeah. director, and storyboard. Um, it might not be. It might be the overall director who was... Um, yeah, no, 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 that, that must have been him. Because um, it was him and Yosuke Kuroda, the the, the, the writer, um, were yeah. there. Because um, that was where they, they announced uh, Bad Van, Bad Van Drumble, um, that that was coming oh. out. Oh, okay. Um, and they said, and the only reason this exists is because you guys have been buying Trigun DVDs for the past, like, 10 years. Um, you know, and there's just wow. so much American sales of this uh, Trigun that we were able to get folks interested in making a movie out of it. Um, nice, but yeah, no, you're absolutely right. It was it it, yeah. it kind of died in Japan. I just uh, I wonder what he would have thought about the guy that at Otakon. He went there for three straight years. I think it was 2010 to 2013. Yeah. And he came as Wolfwood, and he had you know his gun, Wolfwood's gun. One year it was all Lego. Wow. Like he made the whole thing out of Lego. And then he said that he didn't have enough time to reassemble it one year because I asked him. Oh. And it was, it was Tinker Toy. 
Wow. That's no, awesome. For him. <laughs> right? And, wow. it, it, and it looked amazing. <laughs> it looked amazing. I was like, oh my God. Yeah. But of course, that is my favorite character from the series. Sure. So, oh, yeah. 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 Oh, I have, I have strong memories of Trigun. Uh, that, that's Joe. Um, uh, let us um, also talk about some other streaming news, not quite as happy. Uh, uh, Crunchyroll has updated their catalog. Um, it was actually really interesting watching this because I happened to be on Twitter when this news came out and seeing how different people reported on it was really fascinating because um, some folks were like, uh, um, uh, you know, Crunchyroll abandons 77 anime. Um, and some folks were like, you know, Crunchyroll loses the license or 77 anime. And like, that's actually more accurate. Um, but point being that, and here's the problem. No one like explained exactly what was going on here, but it's fairly clear from context that the streaming rights for these shows from Sentai expired. Um, yeah. Because it's August 1st, yeah. beginning of the month. Um, and so um, 77 and Sentai Filmworks uh, series will, uh, or have now, uh, gone away yeah, from they're, Crunchyroll. They're gone. They're, they're gone. Um, notable Which ones. Which is a great way to, to, tell a great way to clear about. my... Uh, clear my queue <laughs> like, they wiped out like so that's five or six shows from my queue so i'm like thank you so did, did sure. they actually disappear from their from your queue yes oh it's Shirabako, the picture of Shirabako so is on annoying. there and if you if i click yeah, no, on it to watch the next episode it comes up with a 404 yeah, error that's what happens to me is there, it's like it's still there as an item yeah but none of the videos are there yeah yeah humanity's declined mm -hmm. click 404 error i'm like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jerks. So the, the the big ones that I'm aware of are I mean obviously a lot of um, AKB48, um, Argivolan, Bodacious Space Pirates, Broken Blade, Captain Earth. Oh. Um, uh, oh. Let's see here, Dusk Maiden, of, Maiden of, Dusk Maiden of Amnesia, Flip Flappers, Frame Arms Girl, Glass Lip, oh. um, Girls Beyond the Wasteland, Hakuoki, Humanity Has Declined, um, Magic of Stella, Magical Play. Yep. Wait, Magical Play. Is that what I'm thinking of? Um, is that? No, never mind. Yes, it is. Wow, magical play. That's a thing. Um, no Monogamy the Fool, Fee Brain, oh. Rail Wars, uh, Rin Nei, all seasons. Uh, yeah. Rosen Maiden, Sakura oh. Trick, Shirobako, So I Can't Play H, Super Sonico, uh, Dragon Dentist, Ungo, Undefeated by Humboldt Chronicle, Wakaba Girl, uh, Wizard Barristers. And uh, Wish Upon the Pleiades, plus, of course, a bunch of others. Um, now, I've double-checked a few of these, and they appear to all be on Funimation and Verve. Um, because guess what? Funimation 2 snapped up those, uh, those licenses. Yeah. So I think if you want them, you, you'll have to jump over to, uh, to, to Funny. Or I can just let it go. <laughs> or let it go. Just yes. let it go. Mm-hmm. It's a shame because some of those some of those were good titles. The Undefeated Bahamut Chronicles go. was pretty good, you know. Yeah. Let it go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, it is the consequence we were talking about this before of the uh, the streaming wars. You know, just things shift around, and uh, yep. Yeah. Can't depend on anyone uh, anyone's service. This is one of the things that I fortunately some um, some like media watchdog um sites are doing better at as at doing um like there's some i know anime sites that will say here is the anime that will be leaving crunchyroll at the end of the month yes and that's really right helpful. usually very helpful mm -hmm. um because gosh <laughs> it, it kind of have, happens out of I'm nowhere kind of, i'm kind of hearing i'm kind of hearing from jj stop breaking my heart he's <laughs> just don't go yeah. breaking my heart. <laughs> well, when they when they got rid of Hanasako Yora, mm -hmm. when they got rid of that one, they let everybody know thirty days in advance. Mm -hmm. And I was all like on episode two, mm -hmm. so I hustled it up. I yep. finished out the series, <laughs> and off it went. And it's borrow. like this for the seventy-seven titles. Thank you, Brent, for having news because I had no idea. So as soon as I saw that little snippet, I went and looked, and on my queue, sure enough, like I said, 404, mm -hmm. item not found. I'm like, oh, if you told me the, a month in advance, I would have gotten stuff done. The, the only reason I laugh is I'm imagining a whole bunch of people watching Anohana halfway through, then suddenly it disappears. Whoop. Yeah. Like, oh. uh. 
Ah, uh, I need to know. And then trying to figure out where they can go find it to mm-hmm. just finish the few episodes yep. and be done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the, to add to the sting, um, uh, Crunchyroll announced on Tuesday it has now crossed the 3 million subscriber point um, with over 70 million registered users. So that's pretty impressive. Um, I'm assuming that means 3 million paid subscribers as opposed to like probably the subscribers on the site. Yeah. yeah. Um, they reached 2 yeah. million in October 2018 and 1 million in February 2017. So it took a little longer to reach this mark than the previous one. Um, but uh, well, yeah, the question, so the question is, even with 3 million paying subscribers, mm-hmm. you know, we talked about the, this a little bit earlier with uh, God of uh, High School, mm-hmm. that Crunchyroll and Webtoons together, they've got their advertising all over the back of mm-hmm. things in that show to show, you know, hey, this is our right. show. Yep. When you have Funimation and Sentai pulling stuff and putting it on their streaming services, mm-hmm. what's how how's, you know, having three million subscribers is great, but where are you where you know where are you getting your hands on stuff? Because it looks like Funimation is like a you know the pretty big gorilla in the house. Mm-hmm. How are you prying things out of Funimation's hands? <laughs> you know. Yeah, I'm assuming you got to get there first. You know. Um, well, and I think that's, that's one of the the big problems is that Crunchyroll for a long time relied on the other company deals with the other companies the, the big licensors yeah. um and i uh, said okay your catalog is now with us and now they can't do that anymore they kind of got to do it one by one or just own it well that was yeah. that's when uh, hanasako iura went mm-hmm. because that was when the funimation crunchy roll operating agreement fell out mm-hmm. so that it was part of the funimation catalog and away yep. it went yep mm-hmm. so and i think you know, despite three million uh, paid subscribers and seventy million, you know, unique mm-hmm. accounts, uh, I still would lay my money on Funimation having the the reputation, cred, mm-hmm. cash mm-hmm. to get in first. If you were going to have somebody sitting down, you know, JC Staff says, "I've got, we've mm-hmm. got something right now to license," and Funimation walks through the door with Crunchyroll, they're probably going to look at Funimation and be like, "You got a deeper pocket, don't you?" <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, you know, everything I've heard about Japanese businesses being so relationship focused, I, I'm I'm expecting that they are kind of relying on that. That if they've been if they've had relationships with JC staff for the past five, ten years, whatever, that hopefully they will you know keep their place well, at the table. Well, Jay Jay just threw in their Funimation's mm-hmm. owned by Sony. Yep. Oh. Mm-hmm. And Crunchyroll is not. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's like else. so. Well, they're owned by somebody else now. Yeah. Really? Oh yeah. I'm pretty sure. Who's Crunchyroll owned by? I thought it was still a, it's, it's, own, it's, its own operating. Oh, you know, everything's owned by somebody. Um, let me just double check. I thought the um, Outer Media, uh, AT and T, Warner Media. Yeah, so they're owned by AT and T and Warner. Hmm. So who do you think walking into a Japanese <laughs> studio would get more, well, more relationship cred? The, well, and, the company that's owned by a Japanese company or the company that's owned by an American company? The other side of that coin, though, is that um, Sony is has – Yeah, well, and, and Sony has um, stated that they want to keep sort of hands off on Funimation. Um, not that they will not do anything, but they are, they're trying not to meddle too much in Funimation. Um you kind of trying to let it let it do its thing and and not get destroyed by corporate overlord. Um, so... No, that won't last. Nope. <laughs> yeah. Say so trying to squeeze no, every last. penny out of everything. It's yeah. It's, as as soon as fun, so fun animation it proves its its point in terms of its uh, ability to make money, Sony will screw it up. They'll they'll jump in with both feet. All right. Well, um, let's. And on that down note, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now that we're all sad, <laughs> thanks. Uh, let's end with something a little happier. Um, who wants to make pottery? Who wants to be a millionaire? Um, there is a new anime coming out called "Let's Make a Mug 2. Um, <laughs> yeah, I saw that one. <laughs> which is all I'm about. I'm not gonna lie. I'll buy into it. Absolutely. Into Absolutely. It. Um, it had already been announced. It, it, it has cute girl pottery making anime all over it. Absolutely. 
Um, hey, look at this story. Look at this story. Just good lord. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the story is making pottery. Like that's that's the story. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Club um, life is the only life. <laughs> So the backstory of this is this is one of these one of these anime made um, uh, sort of made by a prefecture. So a particular uh, area in Japan wants to increase tourism. So they initially there's initially a manga uh, which uh, started back in 2012 uh, quarterly uh, quarterly updates. Uh, now in their 32nd chapter and they've now uh, launched an anime series or announced an anime series. Uh, well announced back in February, but now they have more details. Um, uh, it will be directed by Jun Kamiya, who is another person with kind of an interesting resume. Um, Blue Seed? Really? Yep. Um, let's see here. Um, and, and storyboard and direct and, and uh, key animation and such and a bunch of other stuff. But um, Hikaru no Go. Um, oh, yeah. Chunks of Hikaru no Go. Uh, Kingdom. Neo Ranga. Uh, Penguin no Mondai. Let's see here. What are some of the other ones? Um, the Third, The Girl with the Blue Eye. And East, the anime adaptation of East, the video game series. Um, so interesting sort of um, split of that. And he's done, like I said, you know, uh, like storyboard work on everything from uh, Pokemon to Nadia to... Key the Metal Idol, speaking of, um, Goblin Slayer. Like hey. Nadia, Nadia Fushigi, whatever the heck it was. Nadia, Nadia Secret of Blue Water. Water. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that Nadia. Um, Sarah's Celestial wow. Legend, Clan School Detectives, Elemental Galad. Um, so yeah, I mean, he has, he's done uh, quite, quite a bit. Um, I uh, directed wow. that Nippon Animation. And then the, is being written and supervised by, and this kind of caught my eye, um, kind of a similar thing. Um, writer on Dragon Ball Z, also Blue Seed, uh, Kaikoro Nuku Nuku, um, Island, Nuku Nuku, wow, Iria, Zerum the Animation. Uh, let's see here. Um, listen, I- to Island, to father. oh, Island was terrible. Mm, okay, well, um, <laughs> yeah, it's not a good show. Uh, Steel Angel Kurumi. Oddly enough, um, huh? oh. actually, the uh, the uh, series composition on, on Aaron Kurumi is pretty cool. Uh, oh, so, nice. so what's I nice? That show. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, a lot of these announcements, it's like, okay, we're making this sort of regional anime. We'll take what we can get. Uh, but clearly, these are, and like, if you look up the uh, the voice actors, they are, they all have a good number of credits to them to their names. So this look is going to be a, a pretty um, pretty notable production, which is always nice to see. Um, so yeah, the the. Uh, let's see here. So we have a pottery novice, the pottery club's mood maker, the anime and game fan, and the club president who's enjoyed pottery since she was little. So I think we could all write this series right now. Um, I think we we yeah. know all we need to know. <laughs> oh. Is it cute girls doing cute things? Uh, pretty much. Yeah. Well, they have a cute little kappa on on the on the mm-hmm. image here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I was trying to figure that part yeah. out, but yeah. maybe they're so, making the little pottery dish to put on the kappa's head. head. Probably, oh, yeah. that makes sense. No, totally. No. Well, and also the um, the the blonde girl is, is holding like a kappa thing as well, so maybe there's a maybe they're copying it or something. I don't know. Um, well, it could also be uh, um, it's a play on words. Mm, oh, cup! So yeah, they're they're oh, making yes. cups. Uh, okay. So possible. making a kappa. Mm-hmm. Yep, I would not at all be surprised. Yeah, I'll um, bet against you. <laughs> You'll bet against me. Oh, circle gets the square. Damn you, <laughs> Paul Lind. Um, cool. Yeah. So I'm, you know, I'm looking forward to that. It sounds like a. It's one of those things where I'm glad to see this is a regional anime series that thought this through in a way that I think really makes sense. Where you can do something that's just. We're going to be wandering around this area of Japan. Uh, we're like, okay, that, that's fine, but there's nothing really tying it to it. Um, or you can make it like really regional specific. Uh, but I think this is this is something that will appeal to a lot of people. It has a a nice um, concept and the fact that I can't think of another pottery anime. Like it, it's a nice it's, it's a nicely unique different. kind of concept. Yeah, it's different. Yeah, which I think is smart. There was last season, gosh, I can't remember what it was. It was um, 
a guy who was like the reincarnation of Oda Nobunaga. Okay. Oh. And he goes to a, like a museum mm-hmm. and he touches accidentally a pottery cup or a bowl or something. Yeah. Okay. And it turns into a girl. Okay. Like his his okay, first concubine mm. or wife or something like that. Mm. Right. So it's pottery-ish. Okay, but yeah. yeah, there's mm-hmm. nothing that's actually anybody making any pottery. Mm-hmm. It is interesting, though, to think of, and I mentioned it before, um, about Hakone-chan, the seven, mm. the seven hot springs yeah. of Hakone. Mm-hmm. Um, that was the same kind of thing. Like yeah. the hot spring, Hakone hot spring regional authority got together and i think each ep- it's like 12 episodes and each episode's like five minutes long mm-hmm. so it's it's reasonably short yep but their regional jc's got together and said let's fund an anime that'll talk about all the hot springs and we'll give each hot spring a different goddess mm-hmm. and they'll all sort of interact and have like comp you know they'll they'll hate one another or love one another or whatever <laughs> else but it's like this is great regional tourism kind of thing to get people interested in coming to the hot springs and yeah it's like so when i sell the pottery thing i'm like <laughs> Here we go. We're well, catching it, on with this. Yeah, good. and and apparently this is this prefecture is known for its article says Mino Earthware. Yes, and I, I should have mentioned. I don't that. know that much yes. about it, but I just read mm-hmm. that. I should I should have I should have brought that up. That yes, that <laughs> that, that is a thing the prefecture is famous for. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, there was another one from a couple of maybe a year or so ago that was exactly this, but the uh, the boy is moving to this prefecture. And the entire thing is about how bad of a reputation the prefecture has. Uh, so it's this whole comedy about how he's going to move there and he assumes that it's going to be like the worst time in his life. And then he goes there and it's like a lot of his fears are confirmed. Um, <laughs> so they're, they're basically just kind of making fun of how how different their prefecture is from the rest of Japan. Um uh, so it's kind of do you remember what twist. the name is? I do not. No, it is, you know, um, it's you know, it's, 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 I'm it sounds like that could be whatever. hysterical. Yeah, yeah it, it was great. You're, hmm. you're reminding me of Osaka and Azumanga. Right. Azumanga, uh, <laughs> name her for that. And in English dub, they of course put her with the worst Southern Texas yeah. accent mm-hmm. imaginable for, for the dub to uh, to look at the prefecture. Um, I, I love this concept of it, of, of mm. using um, various things to promote your your area where you live because I can't really think of any other places that really do that in, on this level. Um, I'm reminded of the the John Oliver episode where they're talking about mascots, mm-hmm. Japanese mascots, and how that there are actual mascots representing not just industries and stuff like that, but actual towns. Oh and yeah, just totally. One, and, and if you guys, if you want a good laugh, go on YouTube and, and type in Chitan. C H I I T A N. Okay. Uh, comma John Oliver, and all these Cheetah ma- mascots are going to come up. It's the unofficial mascot of this one particular fishing town, mm. Japan, and and the thing is just psychotic. It, mm. I, I just can't explain. It, you just have to <laughs> just to watch it. It's just like cute, like you know, pink kitty mascot that just goes around town and just like you know with like you know like hides like bats behind its back and <laughs> does all these weird creepy little things wow. but then does all these really cute, cute things mm-hmm. but it's so popular and it represents uh represents it and there's an actual right. um dude who plays drums okay for his town and i, I wish i could remember the name mm-hmm. of the mascot but uh, i'm sure if you were to, to look it up mm-hmm. this guy is an actual accomplished drummer and he mm-hmm. plays in the mascot suit cool and he plays with other mascots who who, who played play instruments as well but yeah it's i just think it's interesting Mm -hmm. you know to to do things like that Mm -hmm. absolutely um well all these people how many animes have you seen where you've got the what is it shoten guy or the the shopping street Mm -hmm. is that what it's called oh um and there's like some mascot at some point kids from high school or middle school (laughs) walking through and there's like some weird costume character handing out flyers yeah. mm-hmm. it's like so obviously you know again it occurs enough times and it is so inconsequential oftentimes to the story yeah that it obviously some truth to it because the oh, back, yeah. kind of background radiation you don't yeah. just do it for nothing you do it because it's it is a thing there's a whole so. episode of japanology on that uh about mascot oh. characters in japan Jay got it. Nobunaga teachers young bride ah that's cool. what it, that's what it was thank oh. you Jay. Oh. there we are. Call Jay. yes 
Um, yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, there is like every town has a mascot. Um, yeah. it's, it's pretty crazy. Um, I want to know what the mascot is for that uh, that town that's got all of the uh, the dolls in it. Oh. <laughs> Oh Jesus! The, the creepy doll mask. Yeah, probably the old woman. That 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 <laughs> oh boy, yeah, pretty pretty silly, um, pretty pretty crazy. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to that. Should be fun. I'm just curious as to why you don't have more. Mm. You know what I mean? There there are some notable ones, and then uh, you know, uh, you know, it's true. Mm. Um. You have places which I'm sure, you know, again, girls in Panzer. Mm -hmm. You have Osai Academy. Mm -hmm. You have the town of Osai. Mm -hmm. Or Ori. Or, uh, yeah, 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 the, Ori. It's the, yeah. The name of the town, or the name of the school ship is slightly different than the actual town's mm -hmm. name. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they've got all their little things where the, the locations that show up, they've got uh, supremacy. <laughs> um, I don't, don't. But. You know what I mean? You see that occur in things, mm -hmm. but it's like, why? To make a 12 episode, five minutes a piece, you know, you'd think there'd be a few more rich prefectures that would try it. Yeah, this book is, is all about why that is. Um, most prefectures have no idea what anime is, how to fund it. Not what, it, what anime is, but they have no idea how to insert themselves in, a, in the production process. They can't, they can't even imagine spending money on anything other than flyers. There's just no conception of movie because the, one of the, the plot of this okay. is the, the, the character yeah. the um uh it, it's fiction based on reality um set in with various folks in the anime industry uh one of the characters is an animator working at an anime studio that's way out in the boondocks and they, they basically start talking to the local people at the town saying hey we could set our next anime in this town and increase tourism and it is like pulling teeth to get anyone in the town's like tourism board to work with them. Because to them, wow. anime is to be Muroko chan. Or Sazai san. Or Crayon Chin chan. Right, exactly. You know, because <laughs> they're all they're all 75 years old. You know, none of them have any conception of the, the media mix or any of that kind of stuff. Um, and if they're dumb, right. they just they just they didn't they didn't watch any of this stuff. Um, they're all farmers. Well, it's just it's interesting because it's essentially you're doing it more episodic, but it's mm. essentially just a commercial. Yes, exactly. You know I mean? right. uh -huh. Con conceptually, right. you get more out of it. Twelve five-minute episodes, you, mm -hmm. you can actually cover more ground than you can in a minute worth of worth of advertising. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Now, mind you, the cost of a minute's worth of advertising, you you know, you can film and have somebody edit that film together and do a voiceover. Mm -hmm. It's a hell of a lot cheaper than making an anime. <laughs> yeah. But. You know, for something that's an impact kind of thing, mm -hmm. you know, it's just yeah. it's, it's very interesting that they a lot of places would just forego that. Yeah, um, yeah. Apparently, it's just kind of so outside of the realm of what they're used to that it just kind of never occurs to them. Um, I wonder if the next generation of of uh, townies and political uh, functionaries will have a little better grasp on on that and, and than not, the eighty year old people. <laughs> and not to get too dark, but assuming the town is still there for the next generation. Uh, well, at least the prefecture will be there. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The town, it's you know, some of those towns yeah. might, yeah. might not, the but village, the prefecture um, will be there. Yeah. And, and the by the way, nothing of cups. somebody is going to assume I'm talking about, you know, like Apocalypse. Um, I'm talking about the aging of Japan. Like, that's, that's what I'm yeah. what we're referring to there. 